I feel like it's my duty to do music if I'm supposed to create. Crusty little mix that I did in my bedroom to be played on cinema speakers and for them to say that it sounded sick. Well, we did one gig and a long time ago and it sucked. <laughs> so when you see the 80 plus million streams on Spotify, you own all of those? Yeah, I probably wouldn't make music if it wasn't for this. That's cool. Today we delve into the life of Richard Carter, an emerging music artist from South London who gained popularity with his viral track, Le Monde. However, despite his success online and with the movie Talk To Me, his journey hasn't been as smooth as it seems. We explore the ups and downs of Richard's career as he prepares for his first show as a full-time artist, marking the release of his new song, Paid. I think they've been hitting up my phone too much I keep on listening but I don't get away enough I've been in Sydney Falls, I've been getting played a lot They say my name a lot, I ain't complaining but I feel like That's like the that's paid and that's gonna come out whenever that comes out. But the hook, I don't think I'm getting paid enough. What, what's that all about? Where does that all come from? Uh, didn't get paid for Le Monde, still haven't really been paid royalties for streaming. And for a while that annoyed me because I quit my job and I thought like, it's gonna be okay. Mm. And then nothing came through. And then I started like dipping into my savings and I'm like, no way. Sorting that out, but like, just feeling as if like, I'm not being given what I should be. Right. And now finding ways to find out where I can get that from. Yeah. You've had over 80 million streams on Spotify, maybe even more than that. What's it mm. been like since Le Mans came out? Yeah, it's just a lot of like people calling me saying this is a good idea, being let up and being let down, but like mostly just kind of grounding myself, making the music I want to make. And yeah. content I want to make and just continuing to share because that's what I did yeah, but I wouldn't have got the opportunity if I didn't share what I do so I have to just keep sharing yeah what was it like before Le Mans came out obviously you produce music you're an artist what was the kind of grind like before all that yeah it was difficult because um I was kind of at like a very low point like the streams were going down everything was going down here and then suddenly like this huge opportunity came in and everything just went crazy and now I'm kind of just riding that wave and uh, yeah, my consistency wasn't there, but now I've got more of a motivation to be consistent. Yeah. yeah. And how did that even come about? Like the song's been put in movies, you've been doing all sorts of opportunities. How did that actually like all start? It's just chance. It's just putting yourself out there and it was just being found by people and then people saying, yeah, they like the sound. I'd like to, I'd like you to be part of this film in a way. So if I didn't share anything, I wouldn't have anything. So even if you got that rubbish little song, that rubbish little drawing you think you don't like much, put it out there, someone might like it. Because that beat for me was just like a two hour thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you literally made it like really quick and just hey, it don't it take long. There. Don't take long because I knew what I was doing. I knew what I wanted. It was a clear one. Yeah. After I like laid everything down, obviously it took long to like tweak things and get things right. but. I knew kind of what I wanted out of it. It was a song initially with vocals, but I uh, didn't put vocals in it, didn't want to. Was there ever a time in music where you felt like, no, nah, I don't want to do this anymore, I'm not going to make it, or, you know, you're, you're struggling, you want to progress in music, it's not just happening? Nah. It's always been like, this is hard, but not I don't want to do it. More like, okay. this sucks. <laughs> like, but you always, you always had that belief in you. Yeah, it's always like, I feel like it's my duty to do music if I'm supposed to create. Right, yeah. Um, where does that come from? That drive, that hunger, that it, belief? It just comes from me being excited about it and then my whole family supporting it. Yeah. They just like watered this plant and then the plant is now like some tree. I'm, I'm basically a tree, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is the beginning of your, your journey, basically. Yeah. This is where I first played... Um... Like, 
EastEnders. <laughs> that was the first song I ever like taught myself as like a three-year-old, just like yeah, EastEnders. <laughs> so what's what's the story behind this this piano itself? Uh, yeah, it used to be outside the side of my house, and then we had to take it apart. I didn't take it apart. I couldn't do that. I was two years old. Uh, and then brought it upstairs, slapped it here. It's only been tuned once. It's probably slightly out of key, but I've gotten used to it. So I like the way it sounds. Yeah. So without this, this piano, you wouldn't probably have been that into music or? No, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to practice at home as much and explore music. So yeah, probably not. Yeah, probably wouldn't without the piano. So I ever left it yeah. outside your door. It's all thanks to them. I, yeah, I wouldn't. I might have ended up singing instead, but yeah, I wouldn't have. Yeah, I probably wouldn't make music if it wasn't for this. That's cool. Okay. Okay. Yeah, who are you listening to at the minute, music wise? Uh, listening to Black Odyssey, listening to Steve Lacey, listening to TV Girl. Uh, what else am I listening to? That's like one of my favorite songs ever. <laughs> do, 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 do. Your music taste is quite a variety, isn't it? Even your songs, I couldn't really pinpoint a, sp a specific genre. You kind of like did yeah. a bit of a classical stuff, you got some electronic stuff, you got all sorts of stuff. Yeah. yeah. When I was releasing Paid, it asked me what genre it was. And I had to go on Instagram Live and just ask people <laughs> what genre it was and just play it. Yeah. Because I don't, I actually don't know what it is anymore. I, I knew it was hip hop back in the days, but okay. not so much anymore. Is there any other artists that I really like? Oh, Carter Ace. Carter Ace, is he a relative or? No, he's, got the same he's name? just, I was searching for my own music and yeah. I accidentally found his music. Okay. And yeah, I'm hopefully doing a little feature verse for him this month. Oh, nice, okay. Yeah. So a lot of opportunities have, opportunities have come about through different artists since the song? Uh, with different artists? Yeah, with like one big artist, Queen Herbie. We did like a version of Le Monde with vocals called Overnight. And yeah. we're trying our best to release it, but there's certain little legal things that we can't really get through. So yeah, sorry about that. There's going to be a lot of people like asking for that. They message me all the time for that song. Really? Yeah, the one that was on like TikTok, but I can't put it out. Okay, so the issue with the song is to do the sample. It's not so yeah. much anything else. So you, you did the sample, but you, you did all the other stuff that people don't realize. They think like a sample is still the song in a way, but it's not really like that, is it? Nah, sampling is a lot more. Even in Le Monde, like during the like hook part, I'm playing at least three different cuts at the same time and there's chops of vocals that are isolated. Before AI could even like take out voices, I was doing it with EQ. Okay. So it was a lot more work and, you know, laying the drums, the synths and brass. Yeah. Yeah, if someone can do that exactly how I did it, it'd be really cool, but it just takes effort, you know? So with the song, you own the song completely or a shared of different people? It's a 50-50 split between me and Warner on the master. Okay. But they're like pretty cool with anything I want to do. Right. So when you see the 80 plus million streams on Spotify, you own all of those or is there a 50-50 nah. split? Nah, get like 3%. Oh really? And that's yeah, the kind of shit. issue? You want to get like a higher percentage? Yeah, they deemed it like a remix yeah. and gave me 3%. Initially, it was going to be 1%. Oh, Renault 5. And I said 5 and then they said 3 but really I should be getting like 50%. Okay, so that was kind of like your first experience of actually dealing with this kind of stuff. You yeah. Know, you didn't really know. I and got rushed as well. Yeah. So for example, an artist is in your shoes one day, what should they be doing? What, what's the kind of negotiation looking like in, in the future? Don't let people rush you. Get an opinion that isn't to do with the situation at hand, like they're outside of it, like a non-biased opinion by a lawyer or some sort of music supervisor that would know about this kind of stuff. But yeah, mm. in either way, like I was lucky for the opportunity. The exposure is nice, but it's hard to make use of the, spo the exposure when there's not money to make use of the opportunities that come up. Right, okay. Kind of like shooting in the wind in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Might just get a patty or something. 
Not much, actually. Never mind. Oh, there's not much. Okay. That's the place to be. It's sold out. Yeah. Fucking gone. I usually order from them because they got like really nice patties. Oh, okay. That's the palace of patties. If you could work with like any artist, who would you, who would you choose? Tyler, the creator. Yeah, was he your inspiration growing up? Because in the, I don't know, 2010, 2015, he was a lot of uh, people's idols back in the day. Mm, i say more so like now, innit? Yeah. Like I like the fashion stuff with the like more like Igor, when Igor came out. Yeah. If I was to work with someone, it'd be Tyler, the creator. That'd be my top of the list. I have a list of people. I can look at that. Are you big into that, like vision boards and you know, yeah. uh, speaking into existence kind of stuff? Yeah, it works. So UK people, there's Wesley Joseph, Lola Young, Dave, obviously, Skepta, or like Ray. Yeah. And then US, there's a guy called Jordan Ward. Okay. He's really sick. He makes kind of music similar to my song, Way I Feel. And then Amine, Steve Lacey, Cardio Bonet. Mm. who I spoke to one time on Instagram, but like, she's busy, I guess. And, uh, yeah. Ooh, my three favorite rap, uh, artists right now, though. Gene Dawson, McGee, and Tizo Touchdown. What genre would you say most of their music is? Uh, it's like alternative. Yeah, alternative. Like, some, you, could, you could even deem McGee is like folky kind of sounding, but he sounds, his music's basically like American infomercials, but you make it into a song. Yeah. It sounds like really cheesy, but it's not cheesy. That's it. I think that's everyone. There's also Tokisha and like Deant Wood. I There's bare artists I listen to that I'd, I'd love to work with. That's what I usually find with music artists. Once they, um, the ones who are actually really into their music, they're not really picky, they were getting inspiration from everywhere. Yeah. That's kind of what you're doing as well. That's right? how it needs to be. That's how you make the new shit. Like, I feel like music became something that was very uninspired by other things other than what it currently was for a while. It's, it's, it's branching out now, like, but it became a bit like everyone wanted to be what everyone was right now. But sometimes you need to look back a bit. Mm. I looked to like the eighties as well for like my inspiration for like punk. I look in the 80s and the early 2000s. I don't look at it now. So you've got like a catalog of uh, yeah. music knowledge back in the 80s. Yeah, 80s is when like dance punk first like came about. So I've listened to all the dance punk albums and then noticed that it came back in 2000. So every 20 years, dance punk comes back. Yeah. So it's 2024 now, it's about time. Okay, and where does that all come from? That knowledge and even that interest in the 80s. So I'd say like my dad's music. He has like all the Beatles stuff, all the like punk stuff. Like his friends were like full on like Mohicans and stuff like. So I didn't know it'd be interesting to me later on, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah. You all right? Just recording stuff. Just recording stuff. What are you doing? Chilling. Yeah, Karina's in there. Hello. Yeah, where are you? You alright? Yeah. I'm not oh, getting paid enough. It? It's coming out soon, two weeks. Oh, we're shooting like a kind of a documentary thing. Yeah, in a way it's a vlog, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, are you shy? You're getting a bit shy. <laughs> nothing major. It's, it's on me right now. We're just basically walking about like for an eve. <laughs> How do you guys know Richard? How do you guys know Richard? Yeah, we've had the party. Oh, is it related? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I remember, yeah. Nice. Thank you, made sure it was nice for the video. Nice, nice. Yeah. But we're just... Yeah, you did. Uh, <laughs> Sophia over there, she's uh, <laughs> very shy. That's one of my cousins uh, at the hair shop right now, chilling. Yeah, uh, I'll let you guys do your thing. See ya. Bye. Hi. Do you have a jerk chicken combination box? I do. Do you have like jerk chicken and rice and peas? Yes. The jerk sauce? What other sauce have you got? Oxtail gravy. Could I have oxtail gravy? Yeah. Yes, please. All around? Yeah. <laughs> Let's head upstairs. Where all the magic happens. That's where you make all the music. Yep. 
couldn't trip over the stairs. <laughs> Did you trip? <laughs> This is an Auratone speaker. This is the same speakers that they use to mix Thriller by Michael Jackson. And also this microphone would be the same microphone that they recorded uh, Thriller on. Not the exact microphone, but mm. the same model. So I use them kind of inspired by Quincy Jones. These are the first speakers I ever bought and I've had them for probably six, seven years. Uh, I know how they sound, so that's kind of the most useful thing. There's Charizard here, obviously, made that out of some Lego. I bought this in LA, brought it back. Here is the reason I make music, because of Little Richard. <laughs> here is a so picture. What, what, yeah, go on. What, what the, this Little Richard here, what do you yeah. think he'd say to you now, looking back at all those years? He'd probably just dance and then not ask any questions. <laughs> probably just be like, yeah, this is nice. He wouldn't say anything, but he'd be proud for sure. This is a faded picture of us filming the music video for time he actually said time on my forehead but you can't see it because the flash went off right. but we're on a tube it's me ben and calum filming that these are just like it's me and my girlfriend and then just different versions of me in a way i quite like this one i'll probably use this as cover art it's quite cool Getting to know Richard more, it was no surprise that he'd already achieved success in music. I was excited to see what else he was working on. I like working with samples a lot. It just allows me to work faster and also to, I have no idea what this is going to be. Let me just, um... a lot harder than I thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting. I said, no. Woo. And it's me like doing the woos and stuff like that. Oh, like okay. this thing that goes like, this coming, this thing. Uh, this. It's just me and then it's just me going, Woo. like, Woo. Oh, that's so cool. Wait, I want to hear that drop again. <laughs> wait, wait. Because I like reverse the sample and it's like really creepy. Like this bit, it's like. <laughs> It's like backwards. It's just some guy screaming about God. He's like, yeah, I love the Lord. And I was like. Mm. That's sick. I need to change something. I'm going to do something here. On the fly. So this is going to change now. Eager. I'll do that. Watch okay. it down. This will be a verse. So come in, grab something. I would take my time, and usually when I make stuff, I start off. This is my creative process. I'd go like, set fire to the mausoleum, put the stairs to the fire for the full of deeds. And then when I hear that that gap, I think, okay, what goes in there? And I put that in there. So. Set fire to the Muslim. I want to say something. I nowadays I feel like I want to hit out of the box straight away. So I'm like, set fire to the mausoleum. What's that about? And I'm like, what the fuck's a mausoleum? And then I have to find out. Oh, that's where they put like dead people. And I'm like, oh, I'm burning like all the old artists because everyone's trying to be everyone from back in the days. So I'm like trying to start a new thing. So like, want to say something cool out of the box, so like Like some sort of like descending piano, like to really make that bit. So I wouldn't bring it up to back to glory yet, so it'd still be down here. And I'm like, Like, and I would keep going with that until I feel like I'm comfortable and then I drop back into the... Yeah. This is a, this is a very Kanye beat. 
Yeah, it is. That's very Kanye that. beat. I had made this. How long did it take to me? I can check how long. This was just like two hours. Like, I just got this nice drum break that I liked, and I just chopped the absolute crap out of it because I was like, it was like this, which it kind of sounds like. But then I chopped it up to make it. I'm just taking what I have in there and working yeah. with it. And then, yeah, then I found this, this. Story. And I was like, that's hard. Like, you can't go wrong with glory. And I just put this. And then as I was building that, so I've got, I've got. Glory. And then the drums like. But then there's important things in the background, like this metal thing, that's like. It just brings it together. And then there's also stuff like this, like. It's just kind of giving that dystopian feel, like scratchy wood, metally feel. And then there's the, the woos, which just fill in the gap because it goes. The sample ends. What can we do? Like something. And then I'll just wrap over that in a bit. And I think this will be kind of like, in a way, like run my mouth part two, I feel like because I've never done a part two to it. And they're like, oh, what's part two? This will probably be part two. It's got that same energy. Yeah, yeah. It's got that like very clangy, metally sound, metally sound, yeah. metally sound. So I think I'll write this as Run My Mouth part two and just like use it to go over some things and like more raw emotions. So yeah, that's, that's kind of just beats I've just been making in a bit, in a cheeky few hours. There's, there's loads and loads and loads and loads and loads. With Richard's first live show since going full-time in music just days away, I joined him for a rehearsal with his band. Wow! Well, yeah. well, this is real like School of Rock. Yeah. <laughs> so who's Jack Black? You. Have you guys all played together before? Because obviously you know each other from yeah, back I, in the day. I played with Max a bunch of times. Um, I've, I've never really played with Richard before. We did one gig a, a long time ago and it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> sucked. Because we, really nice. we, we thought we were really cool. I brought the backing track and he was playing drums while the backing track was playing, but he couldn't hear the backing track. We didn't have it he in didn't have so in-ear so like, yeah. click, so we're just, yeah. I was playing to a track that I couldn't hear. Playing to a track he couldn't hear. It was kind of messy. Yeah. Big mess. So second time lucky. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're good now. Yeah, Fine. this yeah. is no backing track. We're just going full live. Butterflies in my stomach, I found you. At least I think I have. No, no, it's cool. Like, we just played it through normal, and I think that's helpful for you, too. Like, yeah, 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 no, to just go for it. And it, that was solid. Like, you got the breaks, like, it's yeah, kind of, yeah, you yeah, kind of yeah, feel yeah. it musically. It's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it was cool. It, it, gave, it gave it some. some funky vibe to it no. like it felt yeah yeah it was like very was syncopated and like, that was cool i think that's gonna fit right in like yeah what's it been like seeing him grow like over this past year maybe two crazy. years as well it's been crazy you know it's like i'm proud of him i'm really proud of him he does his thing and it's sick to watch him i remember i remember him sending me his first like his first tracks, our letters and and a diss track. <laughs> the diss track. Are you hard on him? Like, will you tell him if it's if it sucks or if it's good? Will you like? Well, he doesn't usually suck. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. And I think when it did suck, we were at the same level of yeah. suckage, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> like when you listen back to like letters and the diss track, it's like, oh, they are mid as hell. To be honest, when it did suck, I was just like excited that he was just making stuff yeah like, that's yeah. sick that's cool like even though I, it wasn't like a musical like yeah masterpiece i was just like that's cool you're putting stuff out there sick yeah that's one, good. you know and how are you guys feeling about the show on friday do you reckon it's gonna, gonna go well we had a little practice today yeah it's gonna be yeah. fun 
it's gonna be busting like we did a lot of practice we, we you know we got the new keys player in for this one day and he absolutely nailed it so i've got nothing to say about whether he's ready cavi the bassist was ill saxophonist ill <laughs> but we're gonna make sure that when they come in on the day we're gonna go absolutely crazy and try and it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine yes 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 saxophonist i agree it's a funny word i concur it's gonna be fun <laughs> yeah Oh, we're so dark in it. Hello. We're saying, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good to see you, man. I met up with Richard again at his show. After seeing him and his band play, I had no doubt it was going to be a great performance. Everyone can clear anything off there in this room. Hey, how does this compare to like the other places you've like played at? Yeah. I've never played at a place that actually gave me a nice room. The last green room I had looked like someone's abandoned like toilet. <laughs> <laughs> They've got plates in here. Well, it's like pop star, you're in the piano yeah. as well. Mirror. Come on. I am T. <laughs> I'm actually in here a little bit now. Yeah. And then go back in the big room. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. How are you feeling up for the event though? Are you quite nervous or? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm nervous. Is nervous it like a, Yeah, a bit of both. Mm. What are you trying to like accomplish after this event? What's like the, what's like the goal of this, First this off, show? A relationship with the venue. Mm. Some good footage to kind of showcase. Oh yeah, the live shows are good so I can show this to other venues. Yeah. And hopefully just Gig a lot more. Mm. Yeah, this is my first gig with an actual band. Yeah, so you've like assembled the Avengers for this one. You've got yeah. a guy who's like pretty good on the keys. You've got your friend who's a drummer. So mm -hmm. two key, two guitarists, bass, and a saxophonist. Yeah, so you've like chosen carefully who to who to bring in a team for this one. Very selective. Mm. So how do you feel about Richard and the event today? Um, I'm feeling really positive about tonight that yeah. he's going to do really, really well because he's been practicing as well. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, tell me about his practicing because he does everything from his bedroom. Is it like, <laughs> are you always listening to it like two in the morning? And Yeah, most of the time I'm actually, my room is actually next to him. Okay. And this, most time I'm actually hearing his music and things like that. And he just like, mom, let me know if you want me to turn it down. I said, yeah, it's okay. I'm so used to it. I even go to sleep with his uh, music on. And as a family, like, how, how supportive have you guys been with his music? and his journey because sometimes music or any kind of thing that you're pursuing by yourself can be quite a lonely journey but yeah what, what's we're it we are hundred percent. We, um, he and his father, we actually support him hundred percent. Whatever he wants to do, because he he studied medical engineering at uni, and um, he just he, when he graduated through the time that he was at uni, he just concentrated on music and things like that. And even though he passed, he graduated and everything, he just faces the music, and I, and we just supported him. And what type of music do you want to play when people walk in? Uh, reggae, pop, hip hop, some like orchestral shit. Orchestral shit. Okay. Yeah. Like like some classical music. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Right? Yeah. No. No. But why not? You know. Yeah. And then, and then for the second half, and then in between, you want more classical music. Uh, we got Lacrimosa. You know. Yeah. 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 Play that in the like towards the end of the break. Okay. Cool. This is some jokes. Yeah. Okay. No worries. What? Get it, bro. Looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> This is the only page they're going to go to. I watched half Kiss the, the book. Episode. Kiss like, the book. Kiss the book. Like, the original is just so good. <laughs> 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 just, That's so cool. They're just repaying it. That's good. Yeah, They're right, 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 right. right. Um, So, first, we've got four acts tonight. The first act tonight is actually going to be an amazing, amazing band. Um, how many of you guys have heard of Mystery Team? Yeah. Yes, yes. So, they're not much of a mystery then. So, um, the first 
acts coming on. Yes. Please make a round of applause yes. for Miss Sweet Team. Yes. Okay. It took a small break, it was just one hiatus And look how low they blow in a paper And look how big they're sick for the paycheck Such a shame Next guy, by the way. Okay, cool. The next song is called Paid, and it's about not being paid by the people that do this. Okay, this is a really cool song.
And then Daniel Bolden Hibbert on the drum. And then we have Cami playing bass. The thickness. And the bottom end that we needed the most. And now we have Charlie, Mr. Pitcher. If you don't know me, uh, my name is Richard Carter. Just search my name on the places where you watch videos and you don't do anything all day. I'll be doing that to try and keep you from doing anything all day. <laughs> yeah, that's good, right? Yeah, that's good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks! Woo! Experiencing it all come together, it felt like this was just the beginning. Seeing his drive and passion as an artist showed me and everyone what is possible. What do you think of Richard? Aye, Richard's amazing, very talented individual. Once he puts his mind to something, there's nothing he can't achieve. I've known him since the sandbox, year two. The sandbox, the sandbox. And he's an amazing person, very strong hearted, strong will. And give him his money. Yeah, Lamont, stop taking away his money. Give him his money. He worked hard. He made millions of millions of views, millions of streams, and they're robbing him. I love that. I'm so proud of him. It was amazing, you know, with the live band and everything. I just appreciate it. Richard, you got, you got singing your praises. How do you feel? How do you feel after that? I feel. Like I'm in. <laughs> heaven. heaven reference, heaven reference. Just okay. a little man take over the summer. I find you. <laughs> how, how was it on the stage? You felt like you were in your zone when you were up there. It felt yeah. natural. I thought I was going to forget a lot of things, but then, like, when you get nervous, you get into the flow state of things. And then I had little Steph going, like, so I had a little grounding place. So, yeah, we're going to get home. We're going to chill afterwards. What are we going to do? We're going to go probably to the bar or something. Probably get some food out. Celebrate. Food! I haven't eaten anything. Yeah. Well, this is definitely the first of many. Yeah, first of many. It's going to be really good. What have these guys been yapping about in front of the camera? Tell them we can get paid. The power. That's what we'll do. But. He just said, I'm destined for greatness. He's destined for greatness, man. You can see it in his core. From the solar plex all the way to his chin. I wrote the drummer. Right, how, how was that? How was that? You were smashing the drums. You held the band together. Thank you. I've I'm just doing my job, you know. How's that compared to the other shows you've done in the past? That was quite a nice video, I thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I play a lot of like jazz and that too, so this is a nice change of pace, you know. I get to groove out a bit more, it's cool. Yeah. It's a nice vibe. Oh, nice. Yeah, they're trying to kick us out. They're so. trying to kick us out? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> they're trying. Are you sure? Are you or will they succeed? Go to the first oh, I know the next time. Turn on Dragon Ball Z. Something like... Cool. Do you want to talk first or should I talk I'll ask you, yeah. Um, how do you feel now after the show? After the show? Uh, well, the show was crazy. The band that I brought together was amazing. The other artists were really good. And, well, it the turnout was really good. And I'm glad everyone came along and I really enjoyed it. What's the future now for Richard Carter? The future for Richard Carter. So, up first, we have July 28th when Paid comes out. You've been hearing it throughout the whole video. And then after that... There's going to be a few more little magical releases, so um, stay tuned. You might have heard one of them at the gig, but it's all going to be just pushing the genre as far as I can get it and mixing in as much as I can to just give you things that you didn't know you wanted. And finally, what's your message to the world? My message to the world is let the kid play. Be a child in whatever you do, and afterwards you can be an adult and analyse it as well. That's what I do with my music. I make it as if like I'm 12 years old, and then afterwards I come in like... So, so what you been up to today, kiddo? Like, do everything like that. I think they been hitting up my phone too much. I keep on listening, but I